In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a solid dividend stock portfolio step-by-step. Step. We're gonna cover everything you need to know when it comes to investing in dividend stocks. And I'll show you all the things you need to know to build a high quality dividend portfolio today. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what is a dividend stock? So a dividend stock is a stock or a company that pays some of its earnings to shareholders. So basically what this means is that investors earn money by simply holding shares of a dividend paying company. And when you do this, this results in passive income Income to you as the shareholder. Dividend stocks are usually going to be well-established companies with a track record of distributing earnings back to shareholders. And that leads us to the question, how do dividend stocks work? So imagine you buy 100 shares of a company, right? And you're paying $10 per share. This means you're spending $1,000 in total for those 100 shares. And let's say that this company pays out 50 cents worth of dividends per share that you own. So if you invest $1,000, you're gonna receive $50 for that year and that results in a 5% dividend yield. That $50 is basically your dividend payment or the passive income you are uh, making from holding that stock. Now, why would someone want to build a dividend portfolio? One of the biggest things is of course, you get regular income. So instead of relying on the appreciation of price for a stock, there's that safety net and that you are actually receiving payments for just owning that stock. You also have more safety and stability and dividend portfolios are historically proven to be more stable than the market itself. Equity portfolios have their own risks. So, you know, in uncertain markets, if there's volatility, then yeah, that's when having a dividend portfolio can make a lot of sense. It also allows you to balance resistance to inflation as well as market fluctuations. So by investing in these dividend paying solid blue chip companies that provide reliable income, that's just another sense of diversification. Now let's talk about some of the pros of dividend investing, right? The first one being passive income. You are able to make money without doing any work. This is arguably the most passive form of income because you don't need to spend any time, you know, keeping your business up to date or anything like that. All you have to do is buy the stock, hold it, and you'll get paid out. This is literally 100% your money working for you. Another pro is that it often beats the market, right? So the return on dividend stocks is actually greater than the average return from the market if you do factor in those dividend payments. It also allows you to reduce risk and volatility. So dividend stocks, they grow a little bit slower, but they're also less volatile and you won't lose money as quickly during bear markets. There's also tax advantages, right? So these dividend payments, they are taxed at lower rates than your ordinary income. And that's because the payments that you're getting, they're like going to be qualified dividends, which include those dividends paid out by U.S. companies. And those are going to be taxed at long-term capital gains rates. On the other hand, you have non-qualified or ordinary dividends, such as those paid by real estate investment trusts. And those are actually taxed at regular income. So yeah, there is a big benefit to holding dividend stocks. You also get compound returns, right? So when you get that dividend payment, you can actually reinvest that money back into that dividend stock and buy more of it. And from there on, you're going to receive more dividends. So you kind of compound and see that exponential growth that way. And markets or when there are big corrections, sort of like right now, dividend stocks actually tend to beat out those high growth stocks that traditionally fall during those times. Now we talked about the pros of dividend investing. Let's also talk about some of the cons. The first one being that there is probably less growth, right? So dividend companies, they take profits and they distribute those to shareholders. And when they do that, that means they actually have less profit remaining to reinvest into their business. And that's one big reason why dividend stocks tend to grow slowly in terms of their price. There's just less money for those companies to reinvest back in themselves. But of course, the trade-off is that some of that money actually goes to investors and that's why we like these types of stocks. Dividends are also never guaranteed. So companies, they can actually temporarily suspend or eliminate dividends altogether uh, if they are struggling financially. If we're looking at dividend ETFs, those are also not as diversified as some of the uh, other big index funds. And that's because they tend to be large caps. So you are missing out on a lot of those medium to small cap companies. Here's some examples of some very popular dividend stocks that a lot of people invest in. You've probably heard of most of these names, but yeah, all these pay a relatively high dividends compared to uh, most of the other companies that exist in the world. Now let's get into the process of starting your own dividend portfolio. We'll get into each of these steps in more detail, but the first one is just to open up a brokerage account. The second is to deposit money into it. Third step is to actually choose what investments you want to buy. And then the fourth step, you actually have to buy those investments. So that money sitting in your account needs to actually be turned into these stocks. So now I'm going to show you guys how to open up a brokerage platform. Uh, I'll include three links down below in the description. And if you guys use those links, you can actually sign up for uh, Moomoo 
for Weeble and for Robinhood and get free stocks when you do that. Definitely recommend it because it's literally free money. So I'll actually show you guys what the whole signup process looks like. If you want to sign up for Weeble, you'll click that link down below and this is what the page is going to look like. Right now you'll see that you'll get up to six free stocks when you open and fund a new account. So you're going to click here and you're going to enter in your phone number as well as the verification code that is sent to your phone. Super simple. The whole signup process takes a few minutes. And yeah, Weeble is a really great app that I've been using for a long time. If you guys want to create a Robinhood account, they are giving one free stock when you use the link down below. And this is what the page is going to look like. They'll have you enter in your first name, your last name, your email address, as well as your password. That's going to take you through the standard brokerage signup process. And lastly, we have Moomoo. This is another really great app that I've been working with long term. You'll get five free stocks when you open up an account and make your deposit. And if you actually deposit $100 or more, you'll get an extra share of Lucid stock, which is pretty amazing. So you'll click here, open account, and it's going to have you enter in your email as well as your password to sign up. Really, the platform you choose does not matter that much because the process of buying shares is going to be the same on all of them. There are tons of other brokerage platforms out there, but the three that I showed you, they'll actually give you those free stocks when you sign up. So that's why I really recommend uh, going with those. So another really cool website is called Vetify. Um, they have a great dividend ETF list. And I know that this video is not just about ETFs, um, but uh, investing in dividend ETFs is a really great way to hold dividend stocks. So if you come here, you'll see that they have a big list of some of the most popular dividend ETFs that you can buy. So of course we have our Vanguard funds over here like VIG and VYM. You have some of your Schwab funds like SCHD. You have your iShares ones. And yeah, it's gonna tell you the symbol. It'll tell you the ETF name, the asset class, the total net assets, price changes and daily volume. And yeah, if you wanna learn more about them, you can click on the actual name and I'll take you to this page with a lot of other information. For example, the expense ratio. So you can see that for this uh, ETF, the expense ratio is just 0.06%, which is extremely low. It'll give you an analyst report as well as a bunch of other uh, stats that are very helpful. And yeah, all this information can actually be found uh, in Weeble, Moomoo, Robinhood as well. So yeah, like I said, it does not matter what platform you're using because all the information is going to be there. Another really interesting site is MarketBeat and you can actually sort uh, all these stocks by their dividend yield. Now I will say that you don't want to buy a stock just because it has the highest dividend yield. Those are called dividend traps and those companies are not safe to invest in. But you can see that this list is going to sort it out uh, by that dividend yield. And you can see that uh, Soro Capital has a dividend yield of 68.32%. All these are very dangerous to invest in, but you know, it just gives you an interesting list that you can look at. And I'll say that you have to do your own due diligence before investing in any of these companies, especially for these higher risk, high dividend yield stocks. So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to buy one of these stocks. And I have Weeble pulled up and I've searched up KHC, Kraft Heinz. This is a very popular dividend stock that is on the safer side. So I'll click here. And yeah, this is what the page is going to look like. You can see the current price is $37.08. You can look at the price chart for the last year, three months, one month, whatever you want. You can scroll down here. It's going to have even more information. You can look at the news as well. You can see the analysis ratings. And yeah, if you want to buy it, you'll click here, trade. You'll select buy or sell. So if I want to buy some, I'll click buy. Uh, the order type is going to be set as limit. But if you want to do a market order, you can do that as well. We'll leave the limit price as $37.03. We'll select how many we want to buy. So let's say I want to buy 10. And then I'll click buy right here. So yeah, super easy. All these apps make it very, very easy for you to actually start buying a stocks. Now, when it comes to investing, safety is going to be one of your biggest priorities. And I'll say that you'll always want to only invest an amount of money that you are willing to lose 100%. Now, the chances of you actually losing all your money with you know traditional stock trading like this is very, very low. So as long as you're not trading options, you should be fine but just a heads up. You'll also want to do your own due diligence before investing in anything, especially stocks. So what I recommend doing is one hour of research per company you're interested in and just make sure that the risk of buying that company uh, matches your risk tolerance. You want to develop your own rules, guidelines, or boundaries for investing. And yeah, just stay consistent with those rules don't trade based on impulses or emotions, and that's going to result in you having a higher chance of succeeding in the market. Here's some other things to consider. These are some key metrics that we'll be going over more in detail, but they include the 10-year average return, dividend yield, diversification, cost of owning ETF, so the expense ratio, the total return, as well as earnings per share, EPS. So the 10-year average return is the percentage used when reporting the historical return of a mutual fund. Specifically, the 10-year average return reports the average return of an asset for the past 
decade. And this can be really helpful in assessing the long-term value and profitability of an asset. What you can do is you can actually stack these 10-year average returns on top of each other. Uh, when you do that, it's going to showcase the profitability of an asset over several decades. Dividend yield is another really important key metric that we've already talked about, but this is the amount of money a company pays shareholders for owning a share of its stock divided by its current stock price. And like I mentioned earlier, even though it's better to, of course, receive higher dividends, uh, don't get fooled by insanely high high dividend stocks, right? So those ones that pay, you know, 20 to 60% dividend yield, those are going to be called dividend traps. Those are probably not going to be the best companies to invest in as they just mean that the company is giving away way too much money to shareholders and not reinvesting that money into its own growth. More important is the company's ability to maintain and slash or increase their dividend payouts. Another really important term is diversification, right? So you definitely want to practice distributing your investments to many assets uh, so that your exposure to any one type of asset or even one sector is limited. The main objective with this is that you want to reduce your portfolio volatility over time. And this can actually be measured by examining the correlation coefficient of a portfolio. You can see that this is an example of a pretty well diversified portfolio. You have six different types of investments investments and they are spread out pretty evenly. Cost of owning an ETF, right? So this is how much does it cost to actually, you know, invest in this fund. So the expense ratio. While this is not like the biggest factor to consider, this only applies for dividend ETFs or other types of ETFs. It's not going to apply for your individual dividend stocks, but I'm a really big ETF person. I think that that's probably the best way for most people to invest in all types of stocks. And of course, you're going to care about the expense ratio because that's how much you're paying basically in management fees. In my opinion, anything under 0.1% is relatively good. And anything uh, above that is going to be a little bit more on the expensive side. So yeah, just be aware because a lot of your growth in your portfolio can get eaten up by these fees. So that's why, of course, it always makes sense to choose ones that have the lowest fees possible. Now, the key term is total return. So the increase in stock price, which is known as capital gains, plus any dividends paid. A company whose shares deliver strong returns results in more profits, uh, and that also results in greater dividend payouts. And finally, earnings per share, EPS. This actually allows you to normalize the company's earnings to a per share value. Companies that show their ability to regularly increase earnings per share over time are gonna be solid dividend stocks that are more reliable. And what you can do is compare the EPS for a company's respective sector with both the company itself as well as its biggest competitors. So when it comes to setting up your portfolio, there are some things that you definitely should do. And we'll get into each of these in more detail detail, but they include buying good stocks, targeting several industries, caring about financial stability over growth. You want modest payout ratios. You want a history of rising dividends. And of course, you want to reinvest your dividends if you want to take advantage of higher compound growth. So buying good stocks, right? The whole goal is to earn good dividends, uh, not to multiply your money tenfold. This means that you don't need to incur unnecessary company risk. And some things that you'll want to consider are having good profitability, right? So both good current profitability as well as future profitability. You'll care about the way that the company actually uses its money and assets. So like how does it actually reinvest in itself? You want to look at the earnings momentum. So is the company profiting at a higher rate than before as well as the intrinsic value? So instead of just looking at the market value and comparing it to like the last year or so, look at metrics like the book value and PE ratio. Another thing that you'll want to do is target several industries. So if you look at the economy and past history, you'll see that economic cycles affect uh, each business and respective stock differently. For example, a bear market um, due to a war in a gasoline exporting country could lead to a bull market for weapons due to the purchase of weaponry. You'll see that right now, some industries are doing a lot better than others. And yeah, this should just lower your volatility. I'd say that typically five to seven different industries is the sweet spot. And you might want to balance relatively stable industries like food and textiles with higher growth industries like tech and energy. When in doubt, I'd say that financial stability is more worthwhile, so it's less risky than the chance for massive growth, especially with dividend stocks. And what you can do is you can actually assess this by examining a company's credit ratings. So this is the ability to reliably pay back debts. And when you can do that, that leads to financial stability. A lot of the higher growth companies, for example, in tech, they can incur massive debt. And so their financial stability and ratings may not be as good. Another thing to look at is the payout ratios, right? So think about dividends as a percentage of earnings. What you guys will want to do is you'll look at the payout ratio and look for something that's 60% 
or less. This means that the company is paying less than 60% of their net earnings to shareholders, meaning they have at least 40% to reinvest back into their business and grow. This also creates some flexibility for the company in times of economic trouble. So of course, if a payout ratio is like, let's say 95% and you see a dip in earnings for a year, then it's very likely that that company is going to have to lower their dividends for that year or just stop paying them. Like I mentioned before, avoid those dividend traps. And yeah, don't let those high yields fool you because you know these companies, they're really bad at utilizing their assets to build their business. There's a reason why they're paying such high dividends compared to the share price. That being said, I'd say don't restrict yourself to just the really, really, really safe lower yield companies because you still deserve a hefty regular income. And there are tons of companies that pay out you know, pretty good dividends while maintaining that safety and reliability. Another thing to look at is the history of rising dividends. So some really good sources that you guys can use to find these rising dividend stocks are dividend aristocrats, dividend achievers, and the value line investment survey. Basically, companies that raise their dividends steadily over time are more reliable and durable. And if they have a good history of paying out dividends on time and, you know, increasing them, then we can reasonably expect these companies to, you know, continue growing their dividends throughout the future. The last one, reinvest dividends. This is more aimed at you yourself, the investor. And what I would recommend is if you don't need the dividend money, if you don't need that money right now to live, actually just reinvest it back into that company especially if you are a believer of it. This is going to lead to higher compounding growth, which as you guys have probably heard, results in the biggest increases in net worth for people. Now let's talk about some dividend investment strategies. We have three in particular. The first is dividend growth investing. So this is investing in dividend companies that experience growth year over year. This is pretty optimal because you're getting a dividend payment, but you're also investing in the company that, uh, you know, is also growing itself and therefore the share price is also going up. So you're making money from appreciation as well as the those continuous dividend payments. Obviously, this is the optimal investing strategy. Then you have dividend capture investing. Uh, this is more inefficient and more risky. And it's basically an income focused stock trading strategy where you hold stocks long enough to get the dividend payout and then sell them. A lot of the times these stocks actually correct for themselves. So yeah, it's hard to make this work and it is more risky. The third is dividend reinvesting. We already talked about this, but that's just buying more shares with your dividends to add extra compound interest long-term. I wanna focus one more time on dividend traps because I think this is something that a lot of beginners fall into and they see a company you know with like 20 to 60 percent dividend yields and they're like of course why should I buy something else with like a three percent dividend yield when I can buy this with a 60 percent dividend yield the fact is that companies with poor financial and business fundamentals uh, tend to have these high yields and oftentimes they cannot sustain those listed dividend yields for any long period of time so to actually analyze these dividend traps you'll want to look at the price to earnings ratio free cash flow and debt to equity ratio. The price earnings ratio is something that helps you determine whether a company is overvalued or undervalued. So generally the higher the PE ratio, the more expensive a stock is relative to its earnings. You absolutely cannot use just a stock's price to determine if it's you know worth it or not. Instead, focus on things like the PE ratio because this actually allows you to compare it to other companies in that industry to better determine value. So let's say, for example, you have a company that's trading at $100 and the earnings per share is, let's say, $5. 100 divided by 5 is going to be 20 and that is your PE ratio. Free cash flow is the money that companies can use to pay out dividends, make acquisitions, and buy back shares. So generally, it's really good if a company generates more free cash flow than dividend payments. And if a company pays out more in dividends than it generates in free cash flow, then it may not be able to sustain dividend payments for a long time. And then your debt to equity ratio is how much of a company's funds are from debt versus from shareholder equity. Generally, it's going to be considered more risky if a company has more funds from debt than you know shareholder equity. And in that case, investors might have their dividends cut if the company runs into financial problems or if it's heading towards bankruptcy. So yeah, here are some of the last things that you guys should remember. First, dividend investing is better as a long-term sustainable source of passive income and not a short-term money-making scheme. You're not going to get rich off dividend investing. That's impossible. Rather, when you're doing this type of investing, you're just trying to get a steady paycheck from your stocks. And this continues to build up over time. And you can actually take that money and live off of it, or you can reinvest it back into those shares or into other companies. For most people, dividend investing is not going to be their main source of income. But after a long time, you might be able to build up a very, very significant dividend portfolio that pays out enough money for you to actually live on. For example, let's say you have a $1 million dividend portfolio with an average uh, you know, dividend yield 
yield of let's say three uh, percent. This means that you'll get you know pretty much guaranteed thirty thousand dollars every single year from those payments. And while the total net value of your dividend portfolio might not go up as much as another one of your growth portfolios, you do get that sustained payment from the dividends, which is really nice to have. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. And you know, with everything going on right now, dividend stocks are becoming more and more popular. You've seen higher growth tech stocks and the S&P 500 really go down in the last half year. But at the same time, a lot of these dividend stocks have really held their value quite well, as well as continue to pay out those dividend payments. So yeah, overall, great way to invest. Shouldn't be everything that you invest, but it can be a good way Way to diversify your portfolio. Like I mentioned, if you guys want to get some free stocks, I'm going to put links down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to share it with a friend, like, and also subscribe for more videos just like this. I make a ton of content about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thanks so much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.